It's understandable to assume that anyone seeking a retrial in a murder case is adamant about their innocence and believes they can prove it. Perhaps that was the case with Jason Young. He was never satisfied with the way his defense team handled his case for the murder of his wife, Michelle. And there are claims of a clear lack of incriminating evidence. Even though the court denied Young's appeal and the life sentence stood, it's interesting to go over this true crime story. We want to see where there may have been holes in the prosecution and what really happened on the night of the murder. There's no doubt that Michelle was brutally murdered in her home, and in this video, we'll go over the evidence of that night, including what happened to her daughter. Let's start with why he asked for a retrial, and the supposed bad evidence from the first trial. The history of this murder mystery case is quite complicated. It all began when Michelle Young was discovered dead at her home in Raleigh. The pregnant 29-year-old was at home with her toddler and family dog when someone brutally attacked her. Evidence shows a violent murder with a potential link to a break-in. There was a sign of forced entry and someone had taken jewelry. Eventually, her husband Jason was arrested on suspicion of her murder. He'd been staying out of town on the night, but alleged to have driven back home in a premeditated plan to kill her. The first trial ended with a hung jury, as there were conflicting views over the testimonies and evidence. Eventually, Jason ended up in jail on a life sentence. In 2017, he requested a third trial to try and clear his name. This all suggests that he's innocent and has something to prove if he refuses to give up. While the appeal wasn't granted, we can't help but question the evidence and the case. Is there a chance that it was someone else? A word of warning for those of you that aren't subscribed yet. Our fans know that these videos can get a little graphic and disturbing in content, and this one is no different. We're going to go into detail about what happened that night, including what happened to their young daughter. Hopefully, by the end of this, you'll want to become a full subscriber to get notifications for all our future true crime content. There's an arguable case to be made in favor of Jason when you look at the timeline and some of the evidence on offer. One of the biggest issues, and the one that's still concerning today, is the time frame of the night in question. The night Michelle died, Jason Young checked into a Hampton Inn at 10.49 p.m. At this point, he was 160 miles from their home, 31 minutes later, the hotel surveillance camera went black, which, according to the prosecution, is when he returned and tried to sneak in. The implication here is that he was on his way to the scene of the crime, but didn't want anyone seeing him exiting through the security door. He was then seen at a gas station at 5 a.m. on his way back. The defense insisted there wasn't enough time to get to the house, carry out the crime, and return. A 360-mile round trip in five or six hours would be tight, but manageable at around a constant 60 miles an hour. Add in the time it took to carry out everything we'll go into later, and it's less plausible. Of course, this assumes that he left at 11.20 when the camera died and hadn't slipped out much earlier. The other issue is the lack of physical evidence to incriminate Jason. The defense stated that the DNA evidence at the scene came from the simple fact that it was at his house. There were no bloodstains on Jason, his clothing, or his car. There was no sign of physical injuries to his hands, as you might expect from a violent beating. There was no bruising consistent with repeatedly striking Michelle's face. That's all the evidence in favor. Now we need to go over everything incriminating him, and it's a lot. First of all, there are the injuries to Michelle Young. This was a quick attack in self-defense or one deadly blow by an intruder. This was a vicious attack that left her with multiple facial injuries, fractures, and dislodged teeth. There was a deliberate intent to kill until he left her face down in a pool of her own blood. The intensity also suggests brute force from a male attacker with deep negative emotions toward her. With everything else we know about Jason and their marriage, this makes sense. Then there's the staged break-in. This is an interesting detail that seems a little misguided with hindsight. A lot of murder cases include a cover-up or staged robbery where it looks like the victim died at the hands of an intruder. In this case, a couple of drawers were missing from Michelle's jewelry box and the garage door was broken. However, there was no sign of any disturbance anywhere else in the house. It looked far more like a faked burglary than a real one. Finally, one of the strongest elements of the story involves the discovery of the body. It was Michelle's sister, Meredith Fisher, that found Michelle dead in the bedroom. Jason had asked her to go to the house to pick up eBay printouts he was trying to hide from Michelle. There was a flimsy pretense about a surprise present so she could go and hide them for him. When Meredith got there, she heard Michelle's dog, Mr. G, whimpering somewhere and spotted some blood on the stairs. 
She also said that the house felt cold. There was no one else there, and it seemed as though no one had been for a long while. Another reason to suspect Jason's involvement was the strained relationship with Michelle. The couple was having issues, despite the pregnancy, and it seems that Jason wanted out of the marriage. His affairs and adultery show a lack of commitment, to the point where he slept with one mistress on the couch of the family home while Michelle was away. Then there are the alarming reports of aggression to former partners. This includes a former fiancé that had her engagement ring ripped from her finger at another couple's wedding. The final red flag into the mental state and aggression of Jason Young is the result of his computer search history. He had searched for anatomy of a knockout, head trauma blackout, head blow knockout, and head trauma, not long before Michelle died. Was this all part of his plan to attack her and make sure he completed the job? The final piece of this puzzle, and the one that swings the evidence firmly against Jason, is his young daughter Cassidy. Cassidy was just two at the time, and in the home when her mother died. There are reports that Jason tried to drug her before killing Michelle. This failed. She was hiding under the covers in the bedroom when Meredith got to the house. A stranger or burglar wouldn't have gone to that trouble. Furthermore, there's the factor of the bloody footprints. Police found small footprints consistent with Cassidy walking in blood. There was some dried blood on her pajama cuffs and toenail, but that was it. This suggests that Jason took the time to clean his daughter before leaving the home. It's possible he did this while cleaning himself, explaining the lack of any blood on him. Thankfully, Cassidy was physically uninjured. However, reports from her later childhood show her exhibiting mental trauma while playing with dolls. She talked about how her mom was covered in boo-boos laying on the floor. Do you believe that Jason Young was to blame for his wife's death? The evidence seems to point that way when we add up all the details with the discovery of the body and the circumstances surrounding the breakdown of their marriage. The timing is tight and there was no obvious blood, but did he clean himself while cleaning his daughter's feet? Are these bloody footprints the key to answering this mystery? What do you think? Is this a cut and dry murder case where he was clearly guilty? Or do you believe someone else was involved? Let us know what you think in the comments section below. And don't forget to like and share to help us out.